I've had the opportunity to see this film a few more times since they put it on Netflix, and getting to experience this again really helped me center on what I thought was wrong with the film. Actually, that's too strong a word. I don't think there is anything necessarily wrong with a film like this, but for me, it definitely fell short in a lot of places. I had done a negative review of sorts about this film in the past, but I think that a lot of the ill will I had in that review really had more to do with the kind of irritation I felt in being forced into this. After a great many superhero films that just didn't do anything for me, it was becoming pretty clear that The Avengers just wasn't going to be for me. But I felt like the fans of this film were trying to force something that they liked onto me, even though I had said numerous times that I probably wasn't going to like this and then I was berated for not liking the film that I said I probably wasn't going to like in the first place. Having sat through it a few more times, however, the shortcomings I saw in the film, especially for a Joss Whedon film, became more apparent, and so I thought I would sit down and try and articulate these problems in a more constructive way. First, let me just say that if you love this film and had a great time watching it, that's great. I've heard from a lot of people that they appreciate this film because it provides a fun alternative from the gritty, quasi-realistic superhero films that have become so popular since Christopher Nolan's Batman franchise. The Dark Knight franchise has definitely had an impact on the industry, and it's true that more fun, light-hearted superhero films are becoming harder to find these days, since most filmmakers seem to want to follow the darker and more realistic tone that Nolan set. I would describe The Dark Knight as one of the best films ever made, of any genre, but I wouldn't exactly call it a fun movie. So the people who feel that the Nolan strategy isn't for them, I'm actually glad you guys have a popular superhero film that is more your preference, and with the success of The Avengers, it means that you can look forward to even more of these in the future. The action-packed camp-style superhero thing really isn't for me, but it provides an alternative for people who would just like to have that option, and I think that's really cool. But having said that, there are places in the film that could have been handled a lot better, even in the context of this being an action film. So hopefully this review will help me articulate them in a more constructive way than just being irritated like in my last one. Now, in thinking about this film again, I actually do have a few nice things to say about it, so let me start with that first. While there is a lot of techno babble in the beginning and it really put me off, the middle of the film, and especially the end of it, has the action ramping up, and it's really hard not to be thrilled by it on some level, even if you don't really care about what's going on. Also, while I think Thor is a completely empty character, I do have to say that both Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston did an excellent job in their respective roles. With the dialogue and wardrobe they were given, it would have been all too easy for this to come across as silly. But these two pull it off great. It never occurs to either of them that anything they're saying is even the least bit silly. It all comes across as believable. Chris Evans does a serviceable job as Captain America, although there isn't much to say about his character either, although I do like the way he leads. When he's commanding a group of soldiers or anything to that effect, he has authority, but he treats them like peers working alongside him rather than subordinates that he commands from above, and I thought that was a really nice touch. And Mark Ruffalo as Banner slash Hulk? Wow, did he do an amazing job. Not much really to say about the redhead, whoever the guy with the bow and arrow was, and the guy with the eye patch. None of them have characters and they didn't do anything. Although, for whatever it's worth, ha ha ha. Alright, that's enough. But all in all, the cast in general was really good. But now let me get into the details of where the film fell short for me. There are essentially two things going on in the Avengers. Loki is trying to open a portal to get a space army in to take over the world, and the Avenger characters have to learn to work together in order to stop him. Needless to say, there is a lot of conflict in this film, but none of it is done especially well. I had mentioned the fight scene between Iron Man and Thor in my last review, and noted that the scene was merely a contrivance to see two superheroes fight. There's no reason these two were fighting, Tony attacking Thor wasn't going to get him Loki back, and in the end, the film just moves on as if the fight never happened. But a much bigger problem crops up at the fight's resolution that goes far beyond mere contrivance. It gives us the problem of the writers creating a conflict in a way that virtually destroys one of the characters. 
not on purpose, but merely because the writers seemed so excited to make these guys fight that they didn't think about what one of those actions means. I'm talking about the moment where Captain America intervenes to break up Tony and Thor. Here we see Thor take an action that on the face of it is more novel superhero fighting, but when you look at it in context, it makes the Thor character unintentionally reprehensible. Now I don't know what you plan on doing here. I've come here to put an end to Loki's schemes. Then prove it. Put that hammer down. Uh, yeah, no. Bad call. He loves his You want me to put the hammer down? Now keep in mind that at this point, Thor had no idea who Captain America was or what his shield was capable of, but just because he tried to break up a fight, Thor, for no reason, attacked him with full force. There is only one way to interpret this. Thor was trying to kill a stranger for doing absolutely nothing. Why? Thor is the one who had been saying the whole time that he only wants peace with humanity and he would never kill an innocent, yet we see him trying to do just that in this one awful scene. This is a case once again of what happens when writers stop thinking about the why and simply show us action for the sake of it. This is just as true of the arguments these characters have throughout the film. Rather than trying to give us any meaning to what is actually being said, Joss Whedon is simply making them say argument things, and it all makes just as little sense as the physical altercations. Take the argument between Tony and Captain America. Now, these two have great potential to have a meaningful disagreement, because they are opposites who, unlike Tony and Bruce, who are also opposites, Tony and Captain America have nothing to complement those opposites with. Captain America fights for everyone but himself. Tony fights for others, but always with his personal interests in mind. So there was a lot of potential to play to those differences, and we get a little bit of that at the beginning of the dialogue, but for the most part, we get things like this. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. Well, yeah, but by that logic, everything special about you came out of a storage closet. Everything special about Banner came from radiation exposure. Everything special about Thor came from another planet. The only two characters in this film that get to boast about what makes them special not being something that just augments them are Redhead and Arrow Guy, so... Shut up, Tony. Again, just make them say argument things. Don't actually think about what meaning the audience could draw from it. Another big issue for me is the complete dependence on the audience being familiar with all the other films in what I am told is the Marvel Universe, especially when it comes to what I am told was an important death in the film. The death of that one guy who was there. And this comes back to the idea of all of these films being a perpetual crossover. I really don't like that strategy since this scene is now dependent on me having to see all of these other films. And I just don't have any interest in a lot of these superheroes or the films that they starred in. I couldn't even sit through all of this one or this one, and I didn't even remember this character being in Iron Man 2 since that film was so terrible. So honestly, this death meant nothing to me. And it should have, because this is the thing that supposedly kicks everyone into action. Because they made this film so dependent on audiences having to see so many other films, they made this death scene impossible to resonate with a significant portion of the audience. And a lot of the plot points in this film have that exact same problem as well. But let me get to the biggest problem I had with the Avengers. And that is how terribly difficult it made it for me to care about what was going on. The film is so jam-packed with action and witty banter that it never stops to think about how to engage the audience in any way other than that. They just make a joke about everything in this film, right down to how the villain is subdued in the end. It makes it really difficult to care about any of this on any level, even in the moments where we're supposed to care, like the ending when Tony eventually decides to sacrifice himself. This bothers me the most because the potential for meaning, for everything coming together to mean something in the end, was built into one specific dynamic that ultimately didn't end up going anywhere. 
and that is the dynamic between Banner and Tony. These two were great together, and the scene that they shared where they talked about their respective powers and responsibilities was wonderful. Why are these two so great together? Because while intellectually on par, these two as people are complete opposites. But unlike Tony and Captain America, their differences complement one another. Tony Stark has control over the suit, but he has no self-control. Banner, on the other hand, has to have self-control because he can't control the Hulk. Each of these two characters has something to learn from one another, and can instill those aspects that they have learned to control in the other person. At least, that's what each character had the potential to do, but as we see in the ending, this opportunity was quietly swept aside. One of the things that bother me the most in the end is how Banner just all of a sudden has control when he becomes the Hulk. There was no precedent for this based on anything that came before in the film, no one moment where he learns to control and can now fight alongside his peers. And the line that he says just before hulking out in the climax just confuses the hell out of me. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Now, what is that supposed to mean? My brother, who liked this film a lot more than I did, believes that it means that Banner always had a measure of control over the Hulk by always letting just a little anger in, to where he can become just angry enough to control him. This simply doesn't add up with anything that came before in the film. What did that great exchange between he and Tony even mean if this were the case? You know, I've got a cluster of shrapnel trying every second to crawl its way into my heart. This stops it. This little circle of light, it's part of me now. Not just armor. It's a terrible privilege. But you can control it. Because I learned how. It's different. Apparently not. He apparently can control the Hulk with ease. So why all the apprehension of even being in the same room with people if he's got this under control? Why seclude yourself in a faraway country if you can take control whenever you like? This one inexplicable action completely betrays what we learned about what is arguably one of the best characters in the film, and it does it simply to get on with the action and have Hulk participate in a fight without being a threat to any of his peers. But the worst part of all of this is that there was a great opportunity for Banner and Tony to each take something meaningful from the other, for that great exchange to come together and mean something in the end. Banner should have been just as mindless and out of control as he had always been, and the scene should have had Tony talking him down, telling him to remember what they talked about with regard to control, and to use that terrible privilege for something good. That conversation should have been the thing that helped Banner learn control. This would have given the climax a tremendous internal payoff in addition to a great external one. And the same goes for Tony. While Captain America was just guilting him into a sacrifice, it should have been Banner who taught him not to be so selfish all the time, to think about the well-being of the people around him just as Banner himself has had to do since his accident. This could have been the catalyst that convinced Tony to sacrifice himself in the first place, and everything between these two characters could have been brought to great fruition. Instead, Tony just makes the sacrifice because that's the thing that happened in the end. And let me state before I close on this issue, none of the suggestions I just made would have detracted from the fun or action of this film at all. You still would have had just as much action and special effects, only you would have had a stronger foundation for all of that action and fun. And the last thing that really bothers me about the ending is that, once again, they just made a joke out of it. Here is Tony Stark, who not only has decided to sacrifice himself for the good of the group, but he is seeing close up just how big and strange the universe outside his backyard really is. He is dealing with overwhelming forces that he cannot understand or control, and this is the last thing he might see before his demise. The realization of how small one human being, even an intellectual and accomplished human being like Tony is, when compared to the rest of the universe, would undoubtedly have a Call of Cthulhu effect where it would just leave a man gibbering in a corner, contemplating the futility and pointlessness of his own existence. But how does Tony react after being presented with these horrors? Alright, hey. Alright, good job, guys. Uh, let's just not come in tomorrow. Let's just take a day. You ever tried shawarma? 
There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. Yep, he just makes a joke out of it and talks about what restaurant he wants to go to. It doesn't seem to have affected him in the slightest, and any possibility of dealing with this revelation is tossed aside for more humor. This is why, even though I freely admit the film wasn't perfect and the screenplay wasn't the tightest that I've ever seen, there were things in Iron Man 3 that impressed the hell out of me. But that's another review for another time. The Avengers is a film of high entertainment value, and it's definitely a lot of fun. But I hope this review has shed some light on the places I feel it could have been much stronger without ever taking away from that fun. That's all.